good morning all of you so today we are going to discuss about a very important aspect symbolic lab biology which is there in unit 4 that is gene regulation in case of prokaryotes and uh, you know that what is a gene it is nothing but the unit of a heredity and which transfers i mean which is a very important aspect in transferring characters from one generation to another generation so if something happens to the gene some sort of mutation or something which is happening that will result in case of what variation in case of living system so when we are talking about a gene the gene can be classified basically into two one is housekeeping gene and the second one is a regulatory gene so what what is the major difference between a housekeeping gene and a regulatory gene housekeeping all of you know that when you go to a hotel or somewhere what would i mean in case of uh, resorts or something whenever you want something immediately that particular service is available the same way this particular gene will be always expressed which will not shut down throughout the lifetime of a particular living system a regulatory gene is not like that whenever it is required it will be expressed whenever it is not required it will be shut down so there will be some regulatory mechanism which will be involved for switching on and switching off of this particular genes as like our power supply whenever we require power supply or whenever we require light we will switch on whenever it is not required it will shut down or switch off so for this there are so many factors which are involved for switching on and switching off of this particular these genes for example i just told you that power supply what are all the basic components required to switch on and switch off obviously the power next comes the transformer next comes your switch so many factors are involved the same way in case of genes also there are different factors involved in switching on and switching off of the gene so if you see the structure of a particular gene you can see that there will be i mean i'm talking about a very general law thing if you go in detail about gene there are a lot of lot of things are there to talk about that so when you take a normal gene regulation what are the basic components which are required for the uh, switching on and switching off of the gene that's what i am discussing here so all of you can imagine a particular gene this is a long stretch which contains upstream and downstream so what is an upstream and what is a downstream the upstream is nothing but from the promoter region whatever which comes in the left hand side is called as upstream and what is coming below that that is coming as what the downstream so if you go upstream of a particular gene you can find out that there are regulatory regions a major region there are lot of components involved in regulatory region we will see in coming classes so there are regulatory regions are present so one of the most important regulatory part of this particular gene is nothing but a repressor region which produces a protein their protein is nothing but the repressor protein we'll talk about that later then comes a promoter operator region right then comes what the, the coding sequences and then terminator sequences this is the structure of a particular gene we'll repeat once again that is you have at upstream a regulatory region followed by the promoter operator region then you will be having the coding sequence and finally it comes what the terminator signals will be present so we will see what is the function of each and every component over there so first thing which i told is nothing but the repressor protein so repressor region once the repressor region is transcribed you will get a particular protein called repressor protein so what is the function of this repressor protein which plays a very important role in the gene regulation this repressor protein will go and bind into the promoter operator region in little downstream it directly means i mean to say that the repressor protein will be produced and the repressor protein is having high affinity towards a region called operator region which is coupled with the promoter region so once the repressor protein binds over there you all of us know about the transcription process so what exactly happens in transcription process that is the i mean the rna polymerase will come and bind into the promoter region after binding into the promoter region it travels towards the coding sequences of the dna and there will be a process called transcription you will get mrna now the condition is the operator region i'm is coupled with or it has been already occupied with what the repressor protein so i told you that it is called po region po region means promoter operator region so already in this particular region the repressor proteins are binded so because of this your rna polymerase cannot bind into which region the promoter region so if the rna polymerase is not binding into the promoter region definitely there is not uh, there cannot be a process called what transcription so the uh, transcription will be arrested so once the repressor protein is activated once it goes and binds into the promoter region or operator region what will happen there will there will be a complete shutdown of what 
the transcription process and the desired proteins will not be produced or desired mRNA will not be uh, uh, produced. That is how the operon will be or the, this particular uh, gene will be shut down. So, when you see a particular uh, mRNA or a DNA, in case of, in case of prokaryotes and uh, we know that uh, we can always classify the living system into prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So, if you see the mRNA sequences which is little different in case of prokaryotes comparing to eukaryotes, the prokaryotic mRNAs are nothing but uh, polycystonic mRNA and the eukaryotic mRNA is monocystonic mRNAs. So, what do you mean by a polycystonic mRNA and uh, monocystonic mRNA? So, polycystonic, poly means many, cystonic, cystron means these are the coding sequences. There will be many coding sequences in case of polycystonic mRNA, but in case of monocystonic mRNA, there will be only one coding sequence which will create a particular protein. So, there are many units are there in case of the prokaryotes, there should be some system to control this, right. So, all these sequences has to be produced, all of these sequences has to be expressed, there will be some something which has to be controlled that. So, this controlling system put together, we can tell it as it is called operon system. In case of prokaryotes, you will find operon system in case of eukaryotes you may not find uh, operon system because eukaryotic mRNAs are monocystonic and prokaryotic mRNAs are polycystonic. So, what is this operon system? The operon is nothing but a cluster of genes. I told you that it is polycystonic so definitely there will be a group of genes will be there. A cluster of genes under a single regulatory control is called what a uh, operon system. Okay, so, how will you define operon system? It is a cluster of genes under a single regulatory control is called operon system. Means a group of genes is there, all these genes will be controlled by a particular uh, system that is called what your operon system. So, if you see the operon system, the operon system can be classified into two. One is inducible operon system, the second one is repressible operon system. Inducible or repressible, as the name indicates, inducible or you can tell it as it is a positive positive gene regulation or a negative gene regulation, positive and negative gene regulation. So, what do you mean by inducible operon system? An operon system, it, it should be either shut down or it will be switched on, depends upon the scenarios. I told you about housekeeping genes, which will be always switched on and it, I mean the products will be always produced in the cytoplasm and which will be utilized for the metabolism of the organism. But uh, when it is not required, there are lot of power, uh, lot of energy loss in case of the organism. To avoid that, there is an operon system. So, it can be classified as what the positive regulation and negative regulation in a very simple way we can tell that. Presence of certain substance, if it induces the operon system, that is called positive operon system or inducible operon system. I will repeat once again, presence of certain compounds. It, it can be an inducer, it, it can, we can tell it as an inducer. If it switch, to, switch on your operon system, that is called inducible operon system that ends up in the positive gene regulation. For example, you are growing a microorganism in a media, like a, a normal a, a bacterial media, you are growing it, and you are just giving uh, lactose into that media and glucose into the media. So, which will be utilized? Always the glucose will be utilized because it is the simple uh, carbon sugar. Lactose will not be utilized because it is little complex. So, since this uh, simple components are available, why to utilize lactose? So, there is no need of expressing enzymes which can be metabolizing, uh, metabolizing your lactose because already the glucose is present. Why to metabolize lactose? So, is it required to produce the enzymes to metabolize lactose? Definitely, it is not required to produce the enzymes. Therefore, even if it is producing, it is a huge loss for the organism in case of what energy. So, it will not produce. In that case, what should happen? The operon system should shut, shut down. Okay? So, if lactose, if glucose is not present, then what will happen? The lactose is present. Uh, they have to go for it. No other option. The organism should go for what? The lactose. So, once the lactose is present, all the, all the enzymes which are required to transport the lactose from the media into the cytoplasm and convert the lactose into glucose and galactose to yield energy, all this process has to happen for that enzymes are required. So, the presence of lactose, if it induces the, your operon, if it switch on your operon, that can be termed as what? Inducible operon, right? So, a positive gene regulation happens over there. 
So, in the second case, one more example we will see in case of tryptophan operon. Tryptophan is an amino acid which is very much required for the growth and metabolism of the organism. So, if the organism possesses tryptophan in its cytoplasm, there is no need to synthesize tryptophan. Already it is there. Why you have to synthesize once again? So, if the organism detects in the cytoplasm tryptophan, tryptophan is available in enough quantity, then there is no need to switch on the tryptophan operon system. So, the presence of that particular tryptophan shut down your operon system. There is a mechanism we will see in the coming, uh, coming classes how exactly the tryptophan shut down, how exactly the lactose induces the operon system. So, the presence of tryptophan shut down the operon system. Okay, so therefore, this can be categorized under what a repressible operon system. So, to conclude uh, the inducible and repressible operon system, the presence of certain compounds, if it induces your uh, gene regulation or the operon system, that is called inducible operon system, and the presence of certain components, if it shut down your operon system, that is called the repressible operon system. Okay, so according to our syllabus, we have different both inducible and repressible operon system and the major operon systems which are mentioned in your syllabus is one is lactose metabolism or the lac operon system, right, which can be an inducible as well as a repressible operon. We will see how exactly it works in both the cases. The second operon which is mentioned is nothing but tryptophan operon system which is an example for the repressible system then which works under one more gene regulatory mechanism called attenuation we will see what exactly attenuation later the another thing is nothing but histidine operon system so histidine operon system which mainly regulates under uh, uh, the um, the termination nothing but attenuation process one second which i was talking about uh, tryptophan operon system and finally you are having a positive operon system once again it is called arabinous operon system so we will see in the coming classes uh, what, uh, what exactly all these operon systems are working on, how the gene regulation which is happening. Okay, to concise uh, today's session, I will just uh, recall what we have discussed today. So, we are going to, I mean, we, uh, I spoke about uh, gene regulation in case of the prokaryotes, that is what the main thing which we are going to concentrate here. So, in case of the prokaryotes, the gene regulation or the gene can be classified into two categories. One is housekeeping gene, another second, second one is what? A regulatory gene, as I told, housekeeping genes always it will be expressed and regulatory gene, when it is required, it will express, otherwise it will not be. We have seen the structure of the genes, right, starting from the uh, regulatory region, where in which the repressor um, region is present, which produces repressor protein, which will go and bind into the promoter operator region. Right. So, once it is pointing into the promoter operator region, RNA polymerase cannot come and bind into the promoter operator region and it cannot transcribe whatever the sequences which is there in the downstream. Okay. So, when the, some genes are required always in our system that is called housekeeping we already discussed, some genes should be expressed when it is required otherwise there will be a huge loss of energy in case of organism. So, therefore, it has to be shut down. So, these uh, shut down and switching on and switch off of the genes in operon system uh, can be categorized as what inducible and repressible just now we discussed what do you mean by inducible that is the presence of certain uh, components if it induces the operon system that is inducible operon system and presence of certain components if it shut down the operon that is called the repressible operon system. In the next class we will see how exactly the lactose operon system works as both positive and negative gene regulation.